I'm not thankful that he goes on fire speech. But it's a pleasure to invite the leader of the opposition to open the debates. First point of rebuttal. Joe claimed that Oxford debaters are actually nice people. <laughs>
something that you would be morally obliged to. And the reason for that is because there are many ways to help, and it is not clear that this is the best among many. Trading with these nations, giving aid to these nations, engaging in tax of cooperation with these nations may all be ways which may be better to help. We could see that it's a morally open choice which to have, and if there are multiple ways to help, you're not morally obliged to use any particular one, even if you're obliged to help overall. Furthermore, we think this particular way is something that we're not morally obliged to do, because the benefits of this way of helping, the way the benefits accrue, are disproportionate and unfair, and the spreading of burdens that their policy has is disproportionate and unfair. Even if we all have a duty to help people in the poor world, their policy means that people who speak English very well, much like Tel Aviv, get an unfair advantage over people who are not the middle class in their countries, who are often quite poor. No, thank you. If we have a moral duty to people, regardless of where they are, why is there this mysterious fact that their policy miraculously helps people the better they speak English and the more access they have to an airplane? That's not, no, thank you, a morally fair way to extend aid, so you don't have a moral duty to help in that way. Moreover, it results in disproportionate burdens, because the countries where immigrants are most likely to go may not be those most capable of help. It may mean that a lot of countries with the easiest land routes from poor countries, which happen to have lots of poor neighbors, are flooded with the burden of caring for the world's poor, or countries that are landlocked. No, sorry, not that much. That are sea all around, right? Like Greenland, that are very hard to get to and share a different language, right? Are just don't share in this in the same way. We think that anything that shares out a moral duty in an unfair way is not something you're obliged to do. But moreover, we think that you have a moral right to refuse entry in this way. And that's because it's in many cases transcendentally important for people to have a right to self-define. To define what your identity is, you have to define your constitutive attachments. That means sometimes you have to say no. You have to set limits to where your culture starts and stops, so that you can say what you are. And more than we put to that states are not just arbitrary territories, but states are systems of cooperation. Because the constitution, right, the laws, the laws about work, the level of welfare provision, all reflect a sort of social system of cooperation working towards a goal. And when you have a system of voluntary cooperation, those within it may choose whom they extend that cooperation to. They may extend it to their children and people born there and they may deny it elsewhere. In just the same way as if we were all a village and we had a rosa for getting water from the well and sharing out that water, it wasn't the case that anybody could just barge in and demand a spot on the rota. If we're in a system of cooperation that's fair and we have a social contract, you can't sign it without my signature. And me for my signature means I can choose whom I cooperate with. So what have we brought you today? The fact that it's morally arbitrary does not mean, where you are one does not mean that it's morally arbitrary to give special duties to citizens. The fact that there's a free market of ideas does not exclude the real fact of market failure. People have a right to self-identity. People have a right to say no. And in some cases, they have a duty to do so. Thank you.